Okay YouTube, this is a follow-up to my video restoring bolts and fasteners on your restoration. So I was notified about uh, Palomino Enterprises going out of business. That is the company that I was using for years on this Park Horizon solution. And I did some research and I, I found this company. It's called Duracoat Firearm Finishes. I reached out to Duracoat, sent them a link to the video and asked them some questions about their product and they sent me a sample here so we're going to try it out and I'll give you my thoughts on it we'll see how it goes okay guys this here is the zinc phosphate park horizon solution and this right here is the magnese They also sent some uh, brochures here with their other products. Really neat stuff. I'll put a link in the description below to their website. And I'll also put a link to both the zinc and the magnesium phosphate solutions. Okay YouTube, we're going to start off with the zinc solution first. The instructions are printed right here on the side of the bottle and as far as the mixing of this zinc goes it says uh, fill your stainless steel solution tank with four parts of clean water and add one part of LCW zinc phosphate solution it says the heat the tank 180 degrees condition your solution before initial use by immersing a pad of degreased coarse steel wool for 30 minutes at this point the solution is ready to use as evaporation takes place add clean water as needed the solution will last for many park horizon sessions so i think what i'm going to do first is uh just mix up about half of this this is 16 ounces i'm going to mix up uh 32 and uh to eight that'll be my four to one and i don't really got two pieces of steel wool so I'm just going to include uh, just a small one that's a that way I'll have enough for the zinc and the magnese I've only got uh, just these two pieces I've got just some regular tap water and we'll fill this to 32 ounces there's our 32 zinc phosphate and we're going to fill this to eight ounces should be about half this is going to be our four to one. Now if you just wanted to mix up a, a smaller quantity, you could just use, just like you was mixing paint, you could uh, use this scale here, the four to one, and uh, just mix up a small quantity. But uh, like I said, we're going to put, we're going to put this in this half gallon jug and use it as needed. So now what I'm going to do is just throw this, uh, piece of steel wool in there we'll start our timer for 30 minutes so while we're getting the solution ready I'm going to be uh, getting our bolts ready just like in our previous video you're going to want to degrease the uh, bolts you're going to use you're going to want to sandblast them uh, clean them uh, you're going to want to inspect them for the threads make sure that the threads aren't damaged like this one here the actual head of it is damaged and I couldn't really tell it until I I got it in the blast cabinet and uh, got all that old grime off of it I've got several of these to go through and uh, just do a final blast on and get them cleaned up and then I'll bring you back and uh, we'll try this solution out okay YouTube it's the next day I went ahead and got the product mixed up I mixed up the uh, the whole solution there I mixed up the whole pint which made uh, pretty much a half a gallon here I've got the magnesium and then I've also got the zinc now what I usually do you can reuse this solution and what I'll do is I'll get another uh, couple clean containers and I'll actually mark them as uh, what they are just like we've got here but I'll mark used on it and that way I can distinguish 
which is the used solution and which is the new solution. And I'll write new on these. I just haven't done it yet. Everything's been degreased and blasted. Been blew off with the uh, air compressor. They're ready to go. I'm going to do these uh, bolts here in the magnes. That's going to be the darker color. And then uh, we're going to do these here in the zinc. That's going to be the lighter gray. Now Duracoat has informed me that they have a pre-treatment for these bolts that you could do that will actually take the uh, magnese and make it a lot more black color. We may try that in the future, but right now we're just trying these two products here out, the magnese and the zinc. So I'm going to start off using the magnese first. That's going to be the darker uh, gray. So what you'll want is a, a stainless steel pot. You'll want just a, like a Coleman uh, propane stove here is what I'm using. We're going to heat this solution to 180 degrees. We're going to submerge the parts in it for 5 to 15 minutes. And you can pretty much tell when they're done, they're, they'll fizz around like Alka-Seltzer. And then as they pretty much finish up, the fizz will die down. Let the part sit in there 5 to 15 minutes. Like I said, this solution is reusable. Uh, 180 degrees, you can get your uh, temperature thermometer and uh, measure that if you want to. You'll get a feel for it once you do it several times. So as you can see there guys, I've got it filled up just enough that our parts will be totally submerged in the uh, solution. We'll go ahead and start uh, heating it. Now it's 157 degrees, so it's getting there. You can just start to see some little bubbles form on the very bottom. And that's when you know you're getting close. We're at 160 and it's 176. We're going to go ahead and dump our parts in there. Alright, so we dumped a few parts in there. And it's right at 176. But you can see, like I mentioned, it just looks like, it just looks like Alka-Seltzer. I'm just using a real long pair of needle nose. So we're, going to, so we're going to dump some more parts in. And want those all the way submerged. Can roll them around a little bit just to make sure that they're getting covered. Like I said, the instruction said 5 to 15 minutes. You can see that little Alka-Seltzer action starting to die down. And you can see right there what that's looking like. We're right at 198 degrees. You can see that water is boiling just a little bit. A lot of times to control the heat, what I'll do is I'll actually just lift it off of there just a little bit. And it's pretty much done, I believe. I've cut the heat off on it. And you can see this white stuff that's kind of floating around. That's just a part of this process. You'll get that. What I'll do, I'll go ahead and take the parts out and we'll follow the instructions for the rest of it. But once this solution sets and I'm going to reuse this solution, I filter that white stuff out with a, just a coffee strainer. When I go to pour it back into my um, container that I've got marked as used. Okay, so now the instructions tell us that we're going to take this stuff out. We're going to submerge it in water. And then we're going to go straight from the water into the WD-40. Uh, the WD-40 is going to displace the water. 
Uh, at that point what I'll do is dry the WD-40 off of it and then um, this is the product that I've always used on these bolts is the Shield T9. So I'll go ahead and give it a good shake to get all that white stuff off. We'll dip it in our water. We'll just drop it into WD-40. Just to give you an idea of how these look, you can tell that the bolt retained all its markings, whereas if you tried to paint it, it just cover those up. The threads, you don't have to worry about paint or anything in the threads, plus it's going to be protected once we put the oil on it and let it dry. Then I just go ahead and put them on another towel and reuse my WD-40. This is just in a Pyrex dish with a rubber lid on it. Every so often you have to change the WD-40 out. It just create it gets a sludge in the bottom of it, and uh, so once it gets really nasty, I just change it out. And I personally, myself, I think the bolts look better the next day once this uh, bow shield is dried on them. We're going to take our T9 and we're going to just give them a good coating. We'll come back the next day, we'll take a lint-free cloth and we'll just kind of just dry it off. Whatever's left on there, we'll just wipe it off. And you can get this in a spray. I just, I just like this little uh, bottle here. It just works really well for this. You're not putting any type of spray in the air or anything. It just works for me. This is kind of the way I've always done it. This parkerizing process holds up really good to uh, the elements, especially with this bow shield on it. If you put a wrench on it. It's, it's going to hold, the coating's not going to come off unless the wrench slips and you mar the bolt. Meaning that you actually move the metal, then the coating's going to move. But other than that, it's going to hold. You know, we've all punched holes in cardboard and took a spray bomb and coated bolts. And they look good for a while, but... Eventually you'll start to see these rust pebbles form on the head of the bolt. Maybe the wrench did barely crack the paint or something. Like I said, they'll, they'll look good for a while, but this process seems to hold up really well. So that's our magnes. And you can see it's, it's a really dark grayish black. Some bolts just turn out more, more darker than others. Like these are the shock bolts, the upper shock bolts for the car, and they almost look black. And these are the door bolts, and they got more of a gray look. I'm going to do the zinc the same way guys. Basically I've got two wiper motor bolts and then I've got about 28 of these specialized screws. These are for the pieces of metal that hold the weather stripping around the doors and um, that's another reason I like this process because look at this screw this is just not something you can just run down to uh, the hardware store and buy. That's a specialty fastener. 
and when we get done with it right here it's going to look brand new we're pretty hot right there 193 194 so I'm just going to pick it up and I'm limited on how I can hold the camera guys because uh, the battery is low I've actually got you hooked up to the charger So you can see the, the small screws are still fizzing just a little bit. Those long screws are pretty much done. So final thoughts on using Duracoat as the chemical for this process versus my old chemical that I was using, Palomino. Uh, really, I can't tell no difference. It's pretty much the same. The only extra steps that I found was the steel wool at the very beginning for the 30 minutes. The only other thing was when you take it out of the solution, they want you to rinse it with water immediately and then go to a water displacement type of oil. They actually sell their own. It's, um, I think it's called LCW or something like that. It's on the website. I'll put that in the description below. But actually, I've used the Palomino for years. I don't see any difference. Basically, if you would have changed out the original chemical that I was using with this chemical, I wouldn't have known no different. So that's my thoughts on it. I was really kind of upset when I found out that Palomino was no longer in business. The owner of that company is Scott Owens, and I had bought uh, that product from his dad when his dad ran the company. But I am very pleased that uh, Duracoat has this product and that uh, it works as well as it does. I'm just very pleased that I can continue to use this process for the restoration of my bolts and my fasteners on my Camaro project and I hope you'll find it uh, helpful as well and like I said we'll let this set overnight and then I'll bring you a final shot of it tomorrow after the uh, bow shield has dried we'll call it done I want to thank Duracoat right now for sending me this sample to try and to bring to you guys and I am just I'm very pleased with the way that it worked like I said I'm very happy we can continue to use this Park Horizon process. Hey YouTube here we are it's the next day and these just turned out fantastic this was our zinc and this was our magnesium Again, these back here were also manganese. So that's it. If you're restoring a classic car, this is a real helpful process for you. We'll catch you on the next one.